This is the third in a, in a series of three tutorials on OpenLP, which is the open source software that we use for projecting song words and Bible readings and multimedia to the screen during worship services. I'm going to get that running in the meantime, but we, in the first tutorial we looked at everything that you needed, need to know to operate an existing set. So somebody has prepared a set on the computer and you arrive and are going to operate the computer during the service. That was the first tutorial. In the second tutorial we looked at how to prepare a set for somebody else to come along and operate. So that is choosing songs and readings and media and arranging them in the service manager. And then in this third tutorial we're looking at creating and editing songs. So we're working in this window and custom slides creating and editing custom slides. We'll have a brief look at the theme manager and then we'll wrap up with a, with a quick look at the, at the settings uh, in the software. So let's begin in the songs window and we're going to find a song to edit, an existing song. If you highlight a song and right click there's the option to edit. And We've seen this window once before in the second tutorial but we'll have a look at it in a little more detail now. Of the four tabs that you can work with, this is the one that you're going to be dealing with the most, and it's the most important. It contains the title of the song, which corresponds to what appears in the song window over there, and it contains all the lyrics, the verses and chorus that are laid out here. You'll see that this, as a contemporary piece of music, is structured differently from a traditional hymn, and you'll see verse 1, chorus 1, verse 2, chorus 2, and you have the opportunity to add a new verse or chorus to the song by clicking on the add button and we can type some text in and we can call this verse 3. If we press OK you'll see that now verse 3 has appeared and there's some text. You can also highlight a, a particular verse or chorus and click edit and that gives you the opportunity to edit the text of verse 3 or you can press delete and actually just remove it from the song, which we're going to do. My preference when I come to this window is usually just to click on edit all because then you see the entire song and you can see everything in context and if you need to move bits about and rearrange it's easier to do it in this window. It's a pretty straightforward window, it just contains all the text separated by these tags uh, which you never actually have to enter by hand if you were going to add, if we were going to add a, an ending say to the song and we chose ending number one and pressed insert the the tag is added for us so you never have to tap those bits by hand there's always a way to make sure that you don't make a mistake and, and get it technically correct but then you can edit by hand and I'm going to just delete that by hand there okay last thing to note on this window is that we can specify the verse order that will normally be used when the song is projected and we looked at this briefly in the in the second tutorial but here we could say this song just runs through as so verse 1 chorus 1 verse 2 chorus 2 and if our preference was to always sing verse 1 again at the end we could do that as well notice how when we hadn't mentioned chorus 2 yet there's a warning that comes up it says look out there's a verse that you have available that you aren't using you don't have to use it but it's just a warning that's helpful and if it's empty um, there's a warning to say you haven't specified a, a usual verse order this is not required but if you do always sing the song in the same pattern uh, might as well put it in because it makes it easier for the operator We go across to the author window and here the existing author of the song is set out. You can go and find another author if there was a mistake and we could add another name to the song and now you would see if we saved that 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 name would also be listed in brackets after the song title in this window. Uh, let's remove that though. What does happen fairly often is you, if you've edit, added a new song and you come along and you find there isn't an author or the author's name doesn't exist yet, then you need to go into this button here to manage authors, topics and song books and we can go in there, add a new author, or add a new topic or add a new song book and that would then 
affect what appears in this drop down window, or the topic drop down, or the songbook drop down. Topics are just descriptions which allow you to cluster similar songs together by theme. Um, we don't make a great deal of use of that, but that is there. And songbooks are where you have a hymn book, for example. So we use the Methodist hymn book and the source are the two that we have available, and occasionally we, we make use of them. Uh, so if you add the number in the Methodist hymn book, it does help when you're looking for a particular hymn number uh, to be able to search by a songbook in this window here when you're preparing a set. You're able to specify a particular theme that is linked to the song, so every time the song plays it's going to use the Flaming Star theme, which is appropriate because of the, the lyrical uh, subject matter, all heavens declaring the glory of God, we have uh, we've chosen a theme that, that um, shows uh, constellations, bright stars uh, declaring the glory of God. So you can do that quite carefully and make sure that you pick appropriate backgrounds or images for each song. And that can always be overridden in the set manager, but it's useful to at least set a default per song. It saves time when you come to, s to uh, pulling the set together that you don't have to think about those kinds of issues. Copyright information can be stored there and that will appear in the footer of the of the song when it is displayed and a CCLI number can be added there as well. Final tab uh, is linked audio. We've looked at this briefly as well. You can, if you have an MP3 file that, that um, can be used as a backing track, you can go and find the file on your system. Uh, wherever you stored your music and we can go into this folder here, no organist, no problem. It's a product that we bought that has numbers of hymns um, on MP3 and uh, we don't have one for All Heaven Declares but if we if we chose an appropriate MP3 and we added it then when the song was projected this MP3 file would be available to um, be played in the background while the song is being projected. One thing to note is that if you move your set and your database from computer to computer this needs to be set up on the local machine that you're going to be using. If you if you copy the song across from another machine, it's going to try and reference the file on that other machine's local system, and it's going to cause all kinds of trouble. So make sure that if you're linking audio, that you do it on the machine that's going to be projecting the music. And we can then press save and changes that we've made to the song will be updated. I'm just going to cancel out. If we're going to create a new song, uh, by pressing that little icon there, you simply get a blank form of the song editor. And we can put in a title, we can either add a new verse or we can go straight to the edit window, put some text in, add verse 2, put some more text in and press save if we wanted to update that. Um, we could specify verse order, put the authors in, topic, songbook, theme, and linked audio. So very simple. Once you've got the hang of editing a song, adding a new song is not difficult. Let's have a quick look at custom slides. Now custom slides are very similar to songs, although the format is slightly different. And these are what we use for a liturgy. So we're going to highlight a standard communion liturgy out of the Methodist Order of Service book. And if I right click on that, we can edit it. And you'll see that it bears some similarity to the song editor. There is a title field and these are slides. So we have these different slides that can be viewed and you can edit a slide or delete a slide. If we go and edit that individual slide there, you can see that the formatting is slightly different from songs. Uh, those curly brackets there, those two tags, an opening tag and a closing tag, ST stands for strong, which means that this text will be printed in bold font. And for us that means that the congregation needs to say those words together. So it's a responsive um, reading and we put, them, we put the letters in caps as well just to make it clear that this is the part that the congregation need to read. So uh, that's one of the formatting tags that you'll find useful and so we can edit all of the um, 
font attributes that appear on the slide and in fact this can be done in a song as well although it's it's seldom necessary to do that it's much more useful in these liturgy slides again you can edit the entire piece which is useful if you've copied and pasted um, a long piece of liturgy into a new slide that you're creating and then you go through add the formatting and put the slide breaks in to separate out uh, all the slides there's another formatting tag that's an italic tag um, which just has that little message then projected in italics if you're adding a new slide um, if you having a look at a paragraph and say that that piece of text is too long let's put a new slide in there that's the way to do it just click on the insert slide button and that'll make sure that that piece of text appears on its own screen its own slide All right, that's a custom slide. And we can specify a particular theme that will always be associated with that slide. And so we've got a couple of communion themes, uh, pictures of a chalice or something like that, bread and wine. And those are the themes that we use when we're projecting communion liturgy. Uh, the same thing applies to a baptism or whatever. We've talked a little bit about themes. Over here on the right is the theme manager. and Let's go and have a look at the, the theme that we had for that earlier song, Flaming Star, was the theme that we used for that All Heaven Declares. So if I select the theme, right click and edit, there's a series of windows that navigate you through all the settings that can be applied to a specific theme. So you can choose a background image or you can pick a solid color and uh, probably solid colors better for visibility so if there are concerns about poor lighting or uh, a struggle to read text on, on uh, there not, there not being enough contrast between the text and the image in the background a solid color may be the way to go or a gradient which is a little more subtle um, so a, a background that shifts between two shades of one color or something like that or a transparent image which allows you the possibility of displaying lyrics over a transparent background which will then enable you to show a video feed or something like that so you could be reading um, liturgy while a baptism is going on and the camera is on on the baptismal family or something like that those are the different options for a background image um, when you're using a, a solid color you can you can specify the background color um, or the or the background that will appear behind the image if the image doesn't fill the entire screen. You can go and you can go and find the image on your file system and um, specify it there. These are the details of the text that will appear in the main area. So in other words, the, the song lyrics or the the, the um, bulk of the custom slide text. You can specify the font face, the color. Um, whether it's bold or italic, the size, the spacing between the lines and uh, you can then add a shadow or an outline and an outline really is a, especially if you're using an image as a background, is a really important thing to do um, and make it thick enough so that if you have white writing on a white background it doesn't get lost the outline makes it clear what the text says and that improves visibility a great deal in the um, any song or custom slide there's this, an area where the, the songwriter's details are printed and the, the copyright details or the author of the liturgy uh, this is the place where you can specify the size and the color and the font face for that in terms of the display of the song you can make sure that it is center aligned which usually makes sense and then vertically aligned on the slide so if you want this, the text to appear in the middle of the song in the middle of the screen that would be the option to go for transitions relate to the way that slides move one into another if you want one to fade into the next uh, there's an option to use transitions we usually leave that out it slows down uh, the movement between slides and we like it to be as snappy as possible so that you aren't waiting in between you can customize where on the screen the, the text appears, that's the main area and the footer area, you usually just leave that at its default location and you can specify what that default is elsewhere. 
um, but this is something that you could adjust if you had a, a lot of text for a song and you needed to squeeze it into a slightly bigger area. Those are, those are possible to do there. And there's a preview of what the theme looks like. You can see it's center aligned and aligned in the middle of the page. You can see there's a background with a, with a, with a black background in the background. In reality, that uh, it won't appear like this on the, on, on the screen simply because if the background is black nothing displays on our screen and also because the image is configured to, to fill the screen and we've got down there the footer information uh, relating to the author and the copyright stuff if you've made any changes then to f when you press finish those will be updated I'm just going to cancel in case there was anything that we did change and that covers the theme manager and you have the opportunity to create new themes and specify all of those settings for a brand new theme and you can take an existing theme and uh, copy it and then make changes to the copy so that you keep a number of the font settings the same um, that's quite a convenient way to do it last thing we want to have a look at is the settings menu and um, you can see there some information on the formatting tags that I spoke about a little earlier and you can see what um, how uh, how those tags we used st for strong uh, that that's the HTML um, corresponding that's the code that's been put into the background that'll make it a, make it display uh, in the uh, in the appropriate way and you can add your own custom uh, details here the 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 opportunities to have things in in different colors and you can create uh, new sections for yourself configure OpenLP this is the main place where you can make changes to the way that OpenLP runs um, you can adjust whether, uh, whether when you're using two screens or just testing on a single screen machine like I'm doing at the moment um, there are startup settings we're going to have a look at um, the advanced window. Uh, this uh, theme window just allows you to, we have it set to allow you to specify a theme per song level. You can also um, insist that a global theme is used all the way through. The advanced tab is quite important. It allows you to um, specify that when somebody is using the keys to the keyboard keys to move through a song that when they get to the end of one song it automatically moves on to the next which we find quite useful you're able to specify the default name of the set that it saves uh, you can specify where the database and all the song information is stored and that's useful if you need to begin again or point to a new or a backup copy um, you can alter that Under the Bible window, we can specify that we like to use the continuous form. We can specify a theme that is used for all Bible readings. And there are various scripture reference details that can be adjusted as well. Um, I'm not going to go through all the rest of those. You can explore that. And that really covers OpenLP. If you want to learn more about the software, the best, best way to do that is just to experiment with the program and then go and visit their site. It's openlp.org and there's good documentation. Other people have made tutorials. There's a wiki that you can explore and there's a helpful users forum if you're battling with something. Uh, they're, they're able to help you with queries that you may have. It's a great piece of software. Uh, it's uh, produced by volunteers and we're very grateful for this tool that continues to be improved all the time. And that's it for these tutorials. Thank you.